Hey neighbor, John from ARTV here for another album review, this time for the long-awaited fourth record The Slow Rush by Kevin Parker's psychedelic rock and pop project Tame Impala. It's rare that you see this long of a gap between records right after your breakthrough to the mainstream, but the man is indeed a perfectionist, so thousands of mixes, masters, and days later, the spaceship has finally landed. While I was familiar with Tame Impala dating back to 2012's scuzzy gem lonerism, it wasn't until Currents arrived in 2015 that I became a full-fledged fan. How can you say no to that record? I mean, most level-headed people didn't, but if that's not neo-psychedelic perfection, I don't know what is. The hooks are remarkable, but not overly forceful in trying to be catchy, the bass grooves are danceable as hell, and Parker's trademark high-register voice took the reverb-soaked vocals to incredible new heights. Currents was one of my favorite records of the 2010s, and it should go without saying that Parker's influence on the modern scope of music has really been felt in the years since it released. Hype has a way of winding up so tall that it topples over once the album in question finally drops and the dust settles. I'd actually argue that fans were kept in suspense for so long that the eagerness for new music eventually came back down to earth so that the pressure wasn't on such an ungodly high pedestal. With some fearless yet blissful singles steadily trickling out over 2019 and into 2020, did Kevin Parker translate the hype into another hypnotizing hour of ecstasy? Teaser tracks of excellent quality are pretty much to be expected from the musical mastermind now, so let's instead delve into the full experience of The Slow Rush, a beautifully titled album with an equally stunning album cover, both of which really made me think about them on a deeper level. If Currents was Tame Impala's foray into psychedelic synth-pop without losing the alternative rock tendencies, then consider The Slow Rush the glossy older brother version of that record, because holy shit, even though time has passed, Kevin's knack for crafting the perfect tune hasn't skipped a beat. Fair warning when you do queue up this dazzling LP, I think this album might not feel as catchy or as memorable as Currents at first glance. We all perceive music differently, and I always try to avoid reading the general consensus on an album before I post my own review, but my initial takeaway left me feeling a bit underwhelmed. But in turn, I'm glad I learned the virtue of patience and spent a little over a week getting to know the ins and outs of the slow rush. Guitars appear less frequently in the mix, although it's not like there's a giant gaping hole in the mix with nothing but open air to fill the void. It's more of a continuation of the electronic implementation in this organic way, as Kevin has pretty much always done. Modulated synths, fuzzy bass rhythms, nocturnal soundscapes, it all checks out as sounding 100% like Tame Impala, just in a slightly updated package. If you're looking for consistent omens in the track list, then keep an ear out for just how brilliantly Kevin Parker explores the concept of time. Whether he's pushing it away, pretending it doesn't exist, or confronting it head on, he narrates the passage of the hourglass in a striking way, right down to the title of the album, The Slow Rush. It's an intentional contradiction, but also a commentary on binding together these themes or production cues that wouldn't necessarily be expected to be seen together. Resiliency and repetition might just be the Tame Impala mantra at this point, but that doesn't mean that Kevin's made the slow burn feel any less effective. This album consistently simmers, like a well-assembled movie that shows its villain infrequently to keep the suspense high, but of course it's bombastic synth hits or bursts of guitar that he keeps on the top shelf instead of a character in a film. Melodies can be just as earwormy as a catchy chorus, so once again working in the album's favor is its gamble on the long run effect. You need to be fully zeroed in to fully appreciate this record, and that's not me saying, oh, look at my fancy headphones that I used to play the album while meditating in a full state of zen. It's just my attempt to remind you of simply how much work went into crafting every little detail of the slow rush. Nothing is unintentional, I can promise you that, and if I ever find myself thinking that I'm an overachiever, I just have to remind myself that KP was out here doing like 1,200 vocal takes for a single song. Forgiving the fact that this record might sound a bit too similar to Currents in Places, this is one of the very few instances where we get a long gap between albums that doesn't completely drop the ball when it comes to the coveted follow-up. This is a sharp, hypnotic, and versatile listen that does a really solid job at conveying emotion, even though it's often tucked under the covers. Rough patches don't fully happen, but there are some questionable lengths to a small minority of tunes, like On Track, for example. Building off of repetitive instrumentation is key for Kevin, we've already established that, but just look to the opener one more year to see what a simple loop can accomplish. Moments like On Track cycle back to the words, strictly speaking, without ever fully fleshing out the rest of the song, but fortunately for us, those sidesteps are the exception, not the rule. Let's break down the gates by tackling the complex posthumous forgiveness first. 
Kevin's voice has a pretty unique affectation attached thanks to some additional processing, but it's not twisted in a way that actually makes it feel like a stranger. Really, this song is just comforting in the most unexpected of ways, including a massive payoff after a long tease from various synthesizers in the mix. All the vibes let loose for Lost in Yesterday, a cut that feels very in touch with current era Kevin Parker, which makes it all that much better. Not to sit here and needlessly compare tracks, but on the scale of catchy to earworm, I'd put this one up there with the likes of the less I know the better because hot damn, this dragon is spitting fire! Breathe Deeper takes that a step further with a delightfully danceable bass groove that turns into an all-out 70s-fueled keyboard showdown by the time the hook breezes through. I truly love this song. It might be my favorite non-single release on the album, but time will tell. The lyrics are a warm embrace to remind us all that the overwhelming anxieties of life don't rule us. Just breathe a little deeper and let yourself exist pain-free, live in the moment. Borderline got a reworked release for the album and it slams! No offense, original Borderline. I loved you like a prodigal son, but this new version with the banging drum kicks and more apparent synth persuasions is dad's new superstar. I'm hanging an A on the fridge, and I couldn't do that before, just saying. So the album opener and closer share very similar titles and even circle some of the same themes lyrically. So let's start with numero uno, One More Year. The robotic choir reverberating over the ears took some getting used to for whatever reason, but once you fall into the mood of this song, it's shockingly relatable in a way that's the complete opposite of pandering. It's more like one handing off some wisdom after going through a rough patch in life that had you feeling stuck permanently like you're just in this pit of despair. The piano crescendos mesh perfectly with the bumping drum hits, and it's really the best album opener I could have asked for. Everything then wraps up in the fate of One More Hour, a sprawling album closer that revisits all of the ideas brought up to this point, including happiness, love, and the future. Kevin does a fantastic job at being patient with this song, filling in sections of looming bass, striking guitars, and surprisingly hard-hitting drum hits that really get the job done and make this a reflective and effective album closer. I will admit that Instant Destiny hammers my nerves just a bit with the I'm about to do something crazy refrain because I'm conflicted. I, overall, I do love the tempo and musical delivery of the song. There's plenty to like outside of those vocal moments that do irritate you, but the more time I spend with the album, it still just feels like an overly shiny hook that draws you a bit too close to the light. It Might Be Time takes a dip in a disco bath before frolicking about in a giant field on what is possibly the album's most instantly memorable tune. The drums on this track are so crisp, plus the passionate breezy vocals really do a number on the subconscious, so I doubt any of us are going to be forgetting this one anytime soon. Finally, let's discuss the somber guitar atmosphere that Tomorrow's Dust provides. Kevin uses time to bring up the idea of leaving the past in the rear view in favor of tomorrow's dust, the impact that we can have if we look forward. Climate change is even brought up in a subtle manner, but it's great to see him driving the stakes in a song as impressive as this. You even get a little reprise of Breathe Deeper at the end. What more could you want? This review wasn't about deciding what the best Tame Impala album is or where the slow rush fits into some overall ranking. I really just wanted a clear-cut understanding of Kevin Parker's vision that's been missing in the past handful of years, in the sense that there has been a gap between Tame Impala records. Personally, I think we got that, and while a very small part of me was left wanting just a little bit more in certain areas, maybe even a little bit broader of a step outside of the comfort zone that's familiar to him, that's a minority stake odor in my brain, and I'm honestly pretty damn happy with the slow rush. Let's get a rating on this bad boy. I'm going with a solid 4 this time, just a hair below my upgraded score for Currents. I hope you're enjoying the music as much as I am, but really either way, let me know how you're feeling in the comments below. I spent a lot of time perfecting this review and making sure I gave a healthy number of listens to an album that clearly had plenty of time put into it, so if you liked my review, then leave a like on this video. Subscribe if you're new in town and ring the bell to get notified when I post more videos like this, and feel free to follow me on the socials you see on screen, all linked below. That's all for today, I'll see you soon for more right here on ARTV.